Hello, my name is Erik Skuman. Welcome to Matters of the Soul. It is lovely to spend time with you. Um, tonight I'm talking to you about being single and happy. Now, <clears throat> given my own relationship status as married and going on for 21 years of marriage uh, in two months time, I am not speaking to you as a single person. So I'm speaking to you as a clinical psychologist and a counselor, somebody who has spent a lot of time with single people um, and who know a lot of single people and who have single friends, friends who are single. So I've, um, I've got a lot of experience uh, in that regard about uh, from single people and I know them and I've walked um, a lot of close-knit therapeutic paths with them, and I've got family who are single, um, lots of types of singles. So, okay, so I'm speaking to you from that regard, and I'm going to give you some inputs on uh, what research says, and also a biblical view to see if we can work towards that place of being happy as a single person. <clears throat> now, I want to share with you, um, you know, being single and happy, I think is what obviously a single person wants. Uh, it's what married people wants to be married and happy and um, it's for us to be happy. So these days we are looking for happiness and we titled it that way that, you know, to look for ha happiness is, in, is what we are, we are all seeking these days. And I think happiness is something that's connected to pleasure and it's connected with satisfaction. And um, so we want to be happy and therefore we um, are as single people you um, are seeking happiness now the question would then be how to find happiness what is happiness as a single person and where do you find it now um, being single these days I've, I've been all the research I've done in preparation for today um, I've I've seen that being single is different uh, they actually even talk about singularism that's the uh, discrimination against single people for instance, at a workplace, the singles are given the midnight shift, the graveyard shifts, the uh, <clears throat> the Christmas working hours, you know, those kinds of things. It seems like at some places, family families are um, given, given preferential treatment above single people um, on, because some of the married people have extra um, benefits, like some of the smokers who go out for those smoke breaks all the time. I'm a non-smoker, so I want to I want to call it non-smokerism. So where I, as a non-smoker, cannot go out for a smoke break, so I want to go out for an oxygen break. But I don't know if that will work because they'll say you can get oxygen in the office too. But I want outside oxygen. In any case, but that's another thing. So singles experience pressure to be married. Um, whether from themselves, or other people, or just in general, the societal expectation of you should be married. And um, some people's single lives are not their own choice. Um, it's not necessarily that they are choosing to be single. That's where they find themselves. Um, <clears throat> any case. And then you get the Christian who is single. Um, that is a, a, a person that that's a unique almost perspective for a Christian to be single. What, what does that mean? What does the Bible say? What is, and there might be many questions for a person such as that. Uh, and, you know, what is God doing with my life? What is his plan? Um, why hasn't he given me a, um, a marriage partner? Why am I, why do my friends get married and I don't get married? Why am I still single waiting all these years? What's wrong with me? So single people might go through a lot of, internal battles um like um you know what, what's 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 the matter with me that i haven't gotten this you know i haven't gotten a, a relationship partner and um and in the end some people find it extremely difficult being single so it becomes a battle it becomes like uh, almost like a curse to be single especially if you're connected with social media and you see lots of people's relationship status so it's almost as if it's expected you've got to be this and there's this internal turmoil of geez you know i just have to 
be different. I have to get married or I have to be in a relationship. Otherwise, I can't be happy. So we're going to address some of those questions and dilemmas and battles and thinking uh, tonight during this uh, talk. Now, um, as always, I can't address everything, but I'm going to try my best. So uh, the question is, um, is a singleness happiness in a single life a place or is it a journey? Um, and um, we'll have a look at that. There's an interesting uh, question as well is, are you, can you be complete as a single person without having the one, uh, the uno, the one person in your life who completes you? Uh, is that so? Can you be complete? Do you need somebody else to complete you? Um, <clears throat> what, how does this complete thing work? And I can share from my marriage perspective on does it really work that way or not? In my, my, my own experience, and what does research say? So in, in 28, there was a study that actually reported interesting levels of well-being uh, that single people were actually as happy as those in relationships. So we're going to see whether um, research actually supports the rest of the uh, of the things that single people actually deal with. So what can a single person do to make their lives better? What affects them um, negatively and positively? And, why, and do you have to be married to be happy? And can a single person uh, lead a meaningful life? And uh, what if you're a Christian and you're single? How does that work? All right. So let's kick off with research. Um, they in research, they look at the various types of singles. So you get different types. You, you get emerging adults, the young adults. They are many a time single. Um, midlife singles, people who are in their 30s and 40s and they're still single or they've never been married or people who are divorced and are single, older singles uh, or singles with children or singles without children. So, and then you... You get singles by choice, people who are who have chosen to be single, and then um, and in various countries, this actually also differs because um, not all of, of the world thinks like Westerners do. So some people actually see uh, sing, being single different, and in um, it, it's not necessarily the same as in um, America. America is just one area, but they do a lot of research, so it helps. But we need to take into account that uh, in Angola, uh, being a single person might be a different experience from being in the Western society because there's a cultural difference, your family and your demographics, those things, how you're interconnected with the people around you may differ. Now, a general perspective on emotional struggles that single people might have will be that they experience loneliness, maybe even jealousy of people who are in relationships, they might feel that they are different, they stand out, they might feel a sense of failure, especially when you are invited to five weddings in a summer, it might be difficult to be happy for other people, you know, um, but not all singles experience this. So that leads us to what researchers actually started to point out uh, are the myths of being single. Now, I just want to say that the research has focused a lot on married people and on how to be happily married and those things, but they've only recently really started to focus on what does it mean to be single and how can you be happy as a single person and those things. Now, from a biblical perspective, what does it mean to be single? From a biblical perspective, it, you're either married or single. You can't be both. So <laughs> and then, and that's from every perspective. But uh, sorry, my phone just knocked i've just knocked over my phone um so what happens is, is if you're uh if you are in a from a christian perspective marriage was always the norm in the biblical times and um and we see that paul the apostle talked about being single and jesus also spoke about being single and devoted to the lord almost as a gift and a special grace um so we'll have a look at that those things a bit later on as well but in our culture and there are certain perspectives of people who are single, and I just want to address some of those. So we'll have a look at the biblical view a bit later on as well. So about single people, they might say that 
um, you know, single people are just focused on being getting married. Now, some single people are, but not everybody is. They are not totally distraught because they don't have a um, somebody um, that they're not married. Um, interestingly, that um, the unmarried people who are least likely <clears throat> to say that they want to get married are the ones who already tried it, those who are divorced or widowed. So it's interesting that people who who don't want to remarry are those who were actually married. And later life in life, men I tend to be more eager to get married again. Um, but it is, you actually get people who choose to be single, just to say that not every single person is desperate. For, uh, you know, And that's also even from a biblical view, not every person, single person is desperate. And it doesn't mean that if you're not married, that you have to be desperate to be, get married. Any case, you can find a balance and you can actually get to a place where singlehood is what you want to be. Now, I'm, I know I'm speaking to a whole lot of people who have different experiences and not everybody has to have the, the, the same experience, but I'm going to tie it in with what the word says. So um, another myth is that single people are miserable, and they're lonely and that their lives are tragic. Um, but I think that's also not very fair towards them. Because you know what's interesting, what the research shows is that even married people, they go through a honeymoon period and then they, re they settle down to the happiness level of what they had prior to getting married. So they, they, they still need to work on their mari marriage and their happiness. Uh, it's, it's so they, if they weren't very happy as singles, they might not be very happy as married people. That's important for you to remember. Um, and since we, we confirm over and over that marriage does not solve your problems. Um, and why? You know, so uh, that, that'll, we'll touch on a bit later as well. So people who get married and who are happy before marriage tend to be happy in marriage as well. And then the, the reverse is true. So it, it's, it's a, it shows towards something else that marriage is not necessarily the solution to all of your problems of happiness as a single person. Um, but the Bible does say that marriage is a gift from the Lord. It's intended um, for people as well. But it does not mean there's not a verse that says every single believer will get married unless it, um, there is... It is, though, clear that people who, who, who devote themselves to the Lord have a special grace um, and that Jesus has said that that is a grace, but it's a truth that you need to work with and, and live with and you need to be honest about it. In any case, but those are complex um, aspects because those leads us to, uh, to other questions. Do, do the Lord want us to be happy? Does he want us to be married? What does he want us to do? Um, and those, those are very important questions to answer. And, um, and if you look at the word, yes, the word says uh, it's not healthy for man to be alone in Genesis. Um, but it is, in, and, and that marriage is in, an institution from the Lord. But that being single is also an institution. But from a biblical view, yes, you need to be clear about having the, uh, the special grace to be single. But that leaves a lot, whole lot of other questions. So why am I not married yet? What is God's plan for me then as a single person? Uh, or some of the relationships I've been in haven't worked out. So how does that work? Is, does God now give me a marital partner or not? Um, in Afrikaans, we say, uh, it's like, I'm a pot. Do I have more? Where's my cover? Where's the, you know, do I have that? Do I, how does this work? Does God have the one for me or not? Um, and that's a difficult one now. Mike Winger and a guy who has another a YouTube channel as well, a pastor, he, has, uh, he answered that question, does God have the one for you? And he, he tends to say, no, God does not have the one for you. He um, believes that there's a, a God has a few for you um, and that he sends people along your way and you make a choice because those who have found a wife have found a good thing. You have, you have to look for her and find her. Um, and then some people take some Bible verses out of context, you know, uh, but uh, they sent uh, for Isaac's wife, but then you have to send somebody to go and find a wife, you know, we, how does it work? For me, my view on it, uh, in my own experience, as well as that the Lord loves me, I'm in relationship with him. 
I follow him. I desired marriage. Um, I, I actively looked for a partner. I had to work on myself and ask the Lord to prepare me and to help me to change where I needed to change. And, and then I found a wife and I believe the Lord also sent her to me. But I had a number of options. And I did not wake up to say, you have to marry this lady now. I didn't get that message, but I, uh, uh, and um, <clears throat> God is so amazing. And I think he works all things together for the good. He is, um, his ways are higher than our ways. So if you've made certain choices and you've let certain good fishes go, God can still work that to the good and he can still work that through. I think Mike says something interesting. He says he thinks many of us are on plan F. For, that God had for our lives we're far from plan a or b a or b so I mean we're we've lost the plot a long time ago so God is able to work all things to the good me even if you had to marry that first person he can work it through if you marry somebody else um, the point is be in relationship with the Lord be sensitive be open to working letting him work on you so that you become more like Christ, so that you are ready. Because not everybody is marriage material, I must tell you that. They run into marriage because they think this is their place. It's going to happen, but it doesn't just happen there. You need to work at a marriage. But in any case, those things we'll get to a bit later. I'm running ahead of myself. So my three, if you get married, you'll be healthier and live longer. That's just some scientific fact. And the difference between the stats, just to tell you, is 92.6% compared to 92.9%. So, I mean, of singles live long and married people live long. My own experience, though, is that married people tend to eat healthier than singles. Some married people, some married people binge and the whole family are overweight. But, I mean, I know my wife, when she was single, she ate, you know, peas and whatever, a piece of bread or whatever, peanut butter, those things at night. I mean, you've got a, a wife tends to look after her husband and help him with his diet and those things. But it's not necessarily the case. So I think that's also taking it a bit too far. Uh, and then uh, a myth for that if you are single, everything is always about you. You, this childlike, self-centered, immature person who has nothing to do but just waste money and play and you have lots of time on your hands. But to be honest with you, a lot of single people are also out there supporting their parents, maintaining communities, busy, rolling up their sleeves. So, I mean, it's not really true. So I'm trying to take some of the burdens, the judgments off you. Um, and the truth is that when you get married, you actually have to focus a lot on your wife and children. And you actually tend to focus a lot of energy there and not so much on the, 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 the outside community. But I've also seen the difference there. I've seen lots of married couples who are focused on digging into the community, contributing. So it's not fair to, to judge people like that there. Oh, that single woman, you know, you are going to be unhappy when you are single and you're going to be, um, you're going to be forever crushed. You can't have children. Um, now, as a Christian woman, and as a woman, you might you might have that natural desire to have children, and that's understandable, and that's part of it. The idea here is not to belittle that or to say that you shouldn't have that. So if you have that, that's natural. If you don't have that and you have peace in your heart and you have in your relationship with the Lord and you have peace, then that is okay. But just go to the Lord with that. I like to advise people to work in their relationships with the Lord. Talk your thinking through with the Lord so that your thinking is publicly based. Then you will have publicly based feelings because your thinking affects your feelings. You can't have it the other way around. You, you know, as a, and I'm speaking to Christian couples, uh, Christian young people and Christian singles. You need to direct your life to the, to the word of God because the, the world, and I've read wide uh, uh, in my preparation, have a lot of different views on singlehood and, and being single and how to meet your needs and what your purpose in life is. And, um, and yes, so, so there's, it comes back to how you think and do you, do you allow the Lord to be the guide of your life? Now for myth, the myth six is also that single men are just, you know, perverts and irresponsible 
uh, no, that's also not true. I mean, that's just rubbish. And um, all that single parents can't raise children. Um, with the Lord's grace, single parents wasn't his initial idea, but I mean, you've got single parents in the word, lots of them. Jake was, Jacob was a single parent to a degree, and uh, lots of other people who were single parents, Ruth um, and her mother, you know, okay, they weren't parents, but there were lots of single people, widowed people, um, but the Lord's grace is there um, for you as well. If you if you surrender to him and you give your life to him and you start to allow him to conform you to his will now and how he wants you to think and do, he will bless you. So that means repentance is to turn back to him fully, wholeheartedly and follow him. Uh, the research actually shows that 94% uh, of, of single mothers, children actually do very well um academically and all those things meaning they adjust to life so it's not that to say that your single you're a single parent your children will be will turn out to be these criminal people yes it's you'll have to adjust and you'll have to um, pray about it and you'll have to involve them in the community and with healthy family healthy family relationships and lots of um, adults who also play a role in their lives might look a bit different from what a, a, a usual family setup would have been, but doesn't mean they're going to be lost in translation, you know. Another one is that if you are single, then, then you are incomplete. You uh, you don't have a life. And I think that's something that we're going to address tonight. Um, and that you, you will grow old, alone, and pathetic. And, um, <laughs> and that's also not true. In fact, if you've been single for your life, your whole life, you're so used to it that you've adjusted and you've made all of the necessary adjustments, most probably. And by the time you grow old, you've you've actually learned how to be single and happy. And um, that's the opposite. Uh, it's then what you've just become single at the age of 73. And now suddenly you have to adjust to that. And then then myth 10 is being married is better than for your wallet and mind. It is, and it also isn't. So I've, I know that as a father, all my cash just goes to the family. So, um, and being single is does not also mean that you are now rich. It depends on your income and all those things. But yes, you as a single person, you could experience financial independence and, and few financial worries, fewer than married people. But it's all relative. The idea here is not, um to, to judge people the idea is to to say what can a single person do to actually find meaning in their lives you know um, when you are a single person there the the science actually shows a few advantages they say your mind is uncluttered um, that means because relationships take up a lot of mind space they are mentally expensive uh, a, a lady says not like that that it is expensive mentally to be in a relationship and if you're not it's not you actually have a lot of time to meditate on the lord's word and to and to pray and to be in the spirit that's a, a wonderful uh, consciously in the spirit you know focused on the lord and and to be focused on other people as well so we'll look at that you know and and um, you're more open to actually adjust to a lot of changes in your life um, that obviously depends on how fixed and settled you are uh, in where you are at. But a lot of, a lot of the times, um, single people are, are very resilient because they have to be. They just don't have a choice. Now, in marriage, you also have to be resilient. You can't not be resilient. Otherwise, you'll be over-dependent on your partner. But singlehood actually strengthens your resiliency psychologically your psychological resiliency so the 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 strength in your capability to let me just lift this microphone somehow okay the strength in your capability to bounce back on life's challenges now uh, um there are there might be lots of risks and adventures you that you are willing to take i mean to be honest there are some adventures and risks that i'm not uh, embarking on because i've got a family and i've got responsibilities uh, and um, uh, like owning a bike and, and, you know, racing the bike and those things. I want to do that, but I'm just going to wait a while. And um, 
it doesn't mean that loneliness does not mean uh, or being alone does not necessarily mean loneliness um, because it can also mean solitude and solitude can also be something precious now obviously too much of that uh, a thing can also be diff difficult so the idea is how do you find that balance where you come to a place where you are um, as a single person you can become happy so the research shows as a single person you need to be focusing your attention um the 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 non-christian view is on yourself and discovering your own passions and abilities and those things and nothing wrong with that and focusing on others the community parents siblings friends the uh, people around you your career those things are actually now in your field of attention and that's not bad and you can actually build a very strong integrative network around you and you can be very much involved in the people around your lives if you have siblings who have children you can play a very important role i just want to tell you that the singles in our lives my brother-in-law and sister-in-law and those they play a very important role in our children's lives um they are part of our lives and they even make financial contributions every now and then or whatever they want that makes a difference for us and it makes a difference for our children and it adds to their lives. So it's important as a single person to involve yourself in the network, to build your network. You don't have to be lonely all the time. But that also depends on whether you are you have that sense of self-determination. You need to work on that then um, because that's, but that will lead to more growth for you and more development. In fact, some of the research shows that you as a single person can develop a lot of personal growth. Um, it does not mean that because you're now single, you're not going to grow. You know, you're going to stagnate. You've now frozen in time. No, um, you actually, they actually say you can actually grow a lot. Any case, so what? Um, just an interesting uh, fact is that people who are the least happy singles are those who uh, research shows who have been divorced. Um, but also only for a period of time until they've adjusted. Um, and then they then they work towards being a happy single person as well. So it's um, the interpersonal network of the single person is, is highlighted in research. So that means build your friendships, build your relationships. Now for the Christian, that means going to church, involving yourself with other Christians, um, a women's network, friends, not just three friends, build a network, a stronger network of people around you. And the focus for the single person is, the, is, is where do they focus? Do they focus on self, on others? And that's what we want to look at as well. So to get a, to a place of balance, I mean, a single person can also get burnt out, you know, if they overwork or they are over-involved in other people's lives or too little involved. So they need to work at putting themselves out there. It's when you self-isolate too much that you get a problem, when you, when you starve yourself of interpersonal relationships. Now, some of the things that could, have, could hamper you is the fact that you got hurt in the relationships, especially romantic relationships. And, um, now, that's an important part is to look at your past in romantic relationships, if you got hurt in the past. Um, for you to move on to another relationship, it is true. You need to deal with some of the stuff that you've that you that you've pushed over from a past relationship. A lot of single people have dated and they've had a, a string of broken relationships, but that that can also serve as fertile ground for growth. The Lord can use that to say, "Let me let me work on you at, 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 with your heart. Let me work at some of the things." Some of the single people I know have what we call rigidities. They have rigid perspectives or black and white thinking, some areas of their lives where they are either or, it's either this or that, or they have overly high expectations of relationships that, or standards, or, or they've got what we call attachment difficulties. Um, I'm running ahead of myself again. Any case, but where, where they've actually identified three types of attachments, where they say you're either um, either you disconnect you know, from people from attachments or you overconnect, or you are somebody who um, who connects effectively. So it's 
as a single person, you need to also look at those things. And it's an opportunity to grow and to work at it. I went for therapy when I was single and I wanted to work at my own relationships and my own, my own personality and the hurts that I had from the past. So that would, was also serving as preparation for possible future marriage. Um, so it's important for you to deal with the, the stuff that you've already got, the baggage that you've already got. If you don't, you can't expect a relationship to fix it. You need to work at your heart and, and work at the bitterness or the fear that you might have picked up or the rejection. And you can do that even as a single person um, and counseling can help with that. So what is important is a single person has a few other advantages that they have more options sometimes uh, to, to um, strive after passions and careers and adventures and some Christian missionaries who are single have a lot of flexibility and options. Um, so that's great. You know, that can, that can put you in a position where the Lord can also move you more than he would have been able to move say a married couple so it's an additional advantage something that is very important for you as a single person to remember is that um how you think cbt applies to you as well cognitive behavioral therapy so how you think about your singlehood is going to lead to how you feel about your singlehood so how you approach your life how you frame it up for yourself when you, whether you, if you frame it up as a crisis or a catastrophe, or that you are a victim of either God's will or life or whatever, then you are going to feel that way. And then you're going to feel miserable and you will act in a way that you will have least, le less um, confidence or less, you know, if you, it's how you frame it up. So that's why it's important that you that you work at how you think about this and how you look at this. And that you can pick up from your own words, from people around you that give you feedback. Now, I'm not talking about harsh criticism, I'm talking about healthy feedback. And you can and you can work with that. That that will already help you. And the Lord will work with your perspective so that you'll, if you adopt his perspective on singlehood, that will be great because that's going to change the way you think and feel. So it's important that you um, start to start to lift up your shoulders, put your shoulders back, lift up your head, start to ask the Lord to help you because you've got a place here. Um, so that you don't, don't just step back. Did you know there are lots of other benefits as well to being a single person and that the most famous single person of all time was Jesus? He was the most famous single person. So, and, um, and then it begs the question, how was he as a single person? Then you say, oh, but I'm not Christ. I'm not God's son. Well, let me um, just reframe that a little bit for you. You are also made in God's image. God appointed his own son to be single, <laughs> if that makes sense. And singularly, singularly devoted to his purpose for his life now obviously christ had that gift of single being single but he said the word says he was tempted in all aspects like we are so obviously he was sexually tempted as well he did not sin but he was tempted so um just so that you know he he, he says high priest who has sympathy with our weaknesses he understands your struggles and as a single person he understands them very well and you know what his focus was? His focus was just on loving his father and on serving his father. That gave him purpose and that, that put his attention for how he was going to live and that guided his choices. So he wasn't just primarily focused on his own happiness. He was focused on his father's happiness. So in the world, you would say, listen, you as a single person, you have to be focused on your happiness. Um, and I saw an over-focus there. Now, I'm not criticizing all the... Um, stuff I read I mean some of the things I have a give a balanced perspective but it's as if the single person almost gets to a place where they can become self-absorbed but that's not that's not all the research and those things that's not what all the authors say they would rather say listen it gives you a chance to develop yourself so and you can make meaningful contributions to people and relationships around you and that's but for you as a Christian single your life can be devoted to the Lord whether you're going to get married or not. So the idea here is you don't know whether you're going to get married. 
Um, if you try and get married, great. But you can still then consecrate your life to the Lord as single. In fact, some Christian authors point out the, to the fact, point to the fact that you are a Christian in, in God's eyes, you are single until you get married. Even if you have a boyfriend or girlfriend, you're still single in the Lord's eyes. So meaning um, your body belongs to the Lord, but your body also belongs to the Lord when you get married. You still belong to him. Your life still belongs to him. So I, as a married person, I still belong to the Lord, first of all. And thereafter, I belong to my wife and children. Um, okay, so you are made in God's image as a single person. You have a very specific focus uh, purpose on earth and I just want to remind you that your purpose God has purpose for you as a single person and he has purpose for the married person but essentially this purpose is almost the same it's to serve him to love Christ to put him on display through your life and that is a magnificent huge purpose the dilemma that single people have is that they have this battle that this unhappiness um this grieving turmoil with being lonely and not being married yet and and then that becomes this huge yoke this massive burden on them that crushes them and the idea is from the secular point of view they wanted to say but man embrace your singlehood love your life live every day to the full great it's good advice uh, from the christian point of view the word says embrace the fact that the Lord calls you to serve him fully serve him as full as possible give your life to him give your mind to him give your emotions your devotion your energy to him yes if you want to get married look for a marital partner if you don't find one continue serving him fully your life is not wasted your days are not running on uh, it's not a rubbish you're not wasting your time you're serving the Lord you are pouring out your life for him and that makes a huge difference you are he's using you every day and if along this way in your quest of serving the lord first and then secondly looking for a marital partner you will and you find somebody and you're most likely to if you continue searching you're most likely to find somebody then great you get married but then you still serve him and you still seek him and you still pour yourself out for him. But then you will also do that as a married person because then he's got an additional or not an additional. Yeah, and then he's just got a different way for you to do that. That's also by serving a husband and serving a wife and laying your life down there. But as a single person, you've got the same calling to love other people in the world by laying your life down for the Lord. Take up your cross, follow him. So, And that means you have just as much meaning in your life now if you if you're not sure whether you have the gift of grace i mean then pro you probably don't you know and if you then say but i've got this burning thing that battle that pulls me down to the miry clay now let me tell you as a married person i buckled under the pressure of finances to look after a wife and children and school and medical expenses and I mean, I, and I had this huge clinical practice and I've got to run this and that. And I burned out and I longed for being single in a sense of not having all of this financial pressure, just being able to relax at night, not having to deal with children who don't want to sleep and this and this and that. And I mean, that was selfish in a sense, but I was desperate. So I mean, in a sense, I was married, but I wanted to almost get out of marriage. Can you hear? It wasn't a, it wasn't a perfect picture. I, I still had this battle with the Lord of Lord. I have to trust you. I have to serve you regardless. And I have to just, I come to the place where I surrender my life to you. Um, and now I'm living by faith in finances. I'm setting certain boundaries and I'm trusting the Lord. And I, and I had to get to the place where I, where I accept and um, the situation that the Lord has for me, where he wants me to serve and love. And I've seen his faithfulness in looking after me and in serving and, and in loving me and in providing for me and my family, enabling me to provide for the family. Sometimes he uses me, sometimes he uses other people to provide. So he is carrying that burden. Now, you as a single person, if you, you can also make that singlehood an idol by just 
moaning and groaning so much about it that it becomes this like I was moaning and groaning so much about this responsibility. But you know what? The Lord will look after you, that you've got a heavenly father that loves you. He will guide you. He will take your burden and he will carry it. Surrender your life to him. Serve him. Love him. He will make it a lighter burden. And I'm honest with you now, it is a much lighter burden. I'm actually enjoying my family now. The Lord covers our, uh, he looks after us and he gets the glory and he will look after your needs and he'll get the glory. Doesn't mean you're just passive and you're not doing anything and sitting on the couch waiting to be served. No, that's not the thing. He will look after you, but you, you are there available for him. Otherwise it becomes the self-obsessed focus of this ingrowing toenail that says, oh, poor me. You know, the self, <laughs> self-pity. And I had lots of self-pity as a married person. And I had to repent of that, meaning I had to change the way I think. And the Lord told me, yet he served me first. Let go of your life, and your desires. You will find your life and desire in serving me. And, and I must be honest, in talking to you tonight, in sitting here in the studio, sharing this, teaching here, I am in the zone. And you know what? This is ministry. This is serving. This is for free as well. The Lord is using this. And I'm not saying this to make you feel guilty or what about being for free. I'm telling you that I'm in the place where the Lord wants me to be. And I'm happy there in serving the Lord. And he's carrying some of the difficult burdens. So if at this point in time you are single, you are serving the Lord, then that's his purpose for you. Find his face. Serve him. Seek him. He will come to a place where he will now come and talk to you. And he will help you to to make when you make yourself available to find meaning in your life right here right now as a single person whether you have children where you're older or you're young say lord help me to discern the season of my life so that i can find the rhythm of what you've got for me now because you know what god's plan for your life does not just revolve around you so it, his plan for my life is not actually for me it is for his purpose to use me by his grace in serving him can you hear it's not about me it's not about how I look uh, about the success I achieve it's not about what I think is so great that I want to do it is about his purpose so to be honest this is a it changes the way you approach your life now your happiness as a person still lies in your own hands whether you are married or not you still need to be proactive in, 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 in seeking out adventures and building relationships. I was a married, unhappy person, did not take responsibility for my happiness. I wanted my wife to make me happy and that she can't, you know, she cannot do that. Once I took responsibility for my relationship with the Lord, went to him, gave my life to him, took responsibility for my needs, which took time, I must be honest, took me about two years to get that through my thick skull and then i mean that work the lord bless blesses that he blesses my relationship with my wife but i have to be proactive in in doing things that keeps me happy and i have to build friendships even as a married guy and reach out and do this tonight that is, is obedience to the lord but it's also serving the community it's loving it's loving so as a single person you can still do that does that mean you're not going to be lonely um, no, you'll, you'll have times of loneliness, but then you act on it. You you can be proactive with it. You can work things in that prevents you from just being this lonely victim, um, you know, drifting on the sea, having no hope. Now, I'm not trying to belittle you, but, it, you know, one can get into that place of um, sadness. And there are people who are genuinely lonely and who are genuinely sad. And I do have empathy for that. And I'm not, I have had years of loneliness prior to being married as well. And in marriage, we also had times of loneliness um, when we could not work out things in our relationship, had difficulty doing that. Loneliness indeed is difficult. The Lord used that and I pressed into a closer relationship with him. But was it easy? No. So it is hard. It is very hard. Um, Steph Bosch has a song, Ian Zalmate, the Ian Zalmate. Kijk je aan van tijd tot tijd. So, and it's hard, you know. So I'm not, uh, I, I don't want to minimize your experience. Yet there are some things that you can do that 
in the end, you need to have the discernment of what, where does my control lie? What can I do about it? And what can I really not control? I cannot really just oh, you know, be impulsive and get married just for the sake of being getting married or you make unwise decisions about a marital partner. If you're really all the red lights are flashing, then it's better to be single um, because you can be, build a very rich and satisfying single life. And I've known people like that without uh, doing something as hasty as that. And you know what? Um, you can actually um, <clears throat> get to a place where you where you can develop what they call spiritual children. Now, Paul in the Bible had Timothy as one of his spiritual children, and he saw that relationship as, as very precious. And in fact, all of his um, disciples, all of the people who whom he discipled were spiritual children for him. And then we're looking for with an eternal view that you can actually have invest in people's lives through discipleship, through through um, leading other people to Christ, investing in their lives. That's a huge thing. Um, so I just want to, want to remind you that God doesn't use marriage as a single only way for, to expand his kingdom. He actually uses people everywhere to build relationships through discipleship and, and spiritual multiplication. And, um, and I mean, you can, it, Paul said Timothy is his child, you know, um, so, and then in, even John talks to the people as beloved children, um, that's important. So you have a great commission and you have a great commandment, the great commission to make lots of spiritual children and the great commandment to love them and to go and love people. Then there's another point that single people, I think, that I had to deal with as a married person, I touched on it, was contentment with the my circumstances, even I, though I didn't like it. Um, so contentment doesn't mean that obviously everything is perfect. It just means that the Lord wants us to be happy with the current state of affairs, even though it isn't exactly how we would like it to be. And the reason why he expects that of us is because he promises that, that I will help you with every single situation that you face. I'll give you the necessary wisdom, strength, grace, provision, whatever you need to deal with that situation. Therefore, I expect you to be content. But express your needs and desires to me. Delight yourself in me. And I'm a good, good father and I will look after you. And I will fulfill your needs. I might not fulfill all your desires. Because some desires are left unfulfilled because they draw us to the Lord. They draw us. Sometimes our pain and struggle pushes us to Christ. You know, it forces us almost. It draws us to Christ. It forces us onto our knees. So I have some, as a married person, I have some pains and struggles in my own life that my married life actually worsens. Um, not, I've got a great wife. I'm happily married, really. I have two children. But the marriage setup actually is a grinding stone of holiness and sanctification and it, it it forces me to be dependent on the lord so maybe your single life forces you to be dependent on the lord more so um, than you want to and then you're comfortable with but in the end it forces it, it it focuses your eyes on jesus and it forces you to surrender your and throw yourself onto him and that is beautiful just as a Biblical principle as well, you can be fruitful as a single person, meaning your life can bring a lot of fruit from it. Look at Paul. I mean, huge fruit from that life. And there's a special place of devotion that to the Lord. St. Teresa of Avila, when she, just before she passed away, she was a nun devoted to the Lord. Amazing stuff happening in her life. And she said, just before she passed away, she said, Jesus, my beloved husband, we will now meet face to face. I mean, oof, that's just so intimate and beautiful. So as um, a single person, you have purpose. The Lord loves you. He loves you incredibly. And um, he, he wants to use you just as much as he wants to use married people. So as a single person, you don't have to allow yourself to be bullied um, 
by by the devil or your own fears or other people into a relationship um, but you also don't have to feel like you are a failure now about single sexuality i'll have to devote another program to that or another video um, because single people have that very real sexual temptation experience as a married person, I am also tempted sexually. So, but I have a an intimate relationship with my wife, which if you don't have a, that sexual relationship, as a Christian, the, the Bible does not allow you to have a sexual relationship. People try and bend the word, but, you know, read it. It's very clear. God, um, call, God talks about holiness and, he, and, and the holiness of marriage and the bed needs to be undefiled and the he talks about uh, sexual purity um, in very clear terms. It's uh, people try and bend it, but that is a very genuine reality for single people. And how to deal with that as a Christian single, I'll have to address that in a, in a, in a different program. But I just want to acknowledge the fact that that is a very strong battle, but there is grace again for purity. Whilst you are waiting for a spouse or whilst you are devoting yourself to the Lord. I think it will be unfair of the Lord to expect us to serve him in a certain way, not to give us the necessary strength and grace. Grace meaning unearned favor to deal with it, what we need to fill, to, to uh, serve him. He says he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. And he says he gives us, and I've got the scripture up here in 2 Peter 1 verse 3, that by his godly power, he has given us everything we need to serve him. He has granted us that as a gift to everything that we need to serve him in. He makes us willing and able to do his will. So the point there is that you submit your sexuality to the Lord. You submit your sexual needs that are real and natural to the Lord. Your dreams. And in serving Jesus first, he will give you the grace to uh, in waiting. And if that means waiting for the rest of your life, he will give you the grace to do that you don't have to follow the secular route of saying but okay I, <clears throat> you christians are uh, rigid and 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 fundamentalist and whatever i mean who are you to tell me i can't have sex outside of marriage if you're not a christian that's you're not going to have that view and you're not going to understand it because it it is tied in with a relationship with the lord so i'm not talking to you in that sense um but there is but there is wisdom and there's sanctity and there's, there's uh, safety in that as well, even from STDs and all those things, not even to mention that. Just to tell you about um, some important last thoughts to remember. So being single is not an either or. It doesn't mean whether you are either single and, and unhappy or married and happy. No, no, you can be single and have a devoted life to the Lord and be happy. Contentment actually means you learn to dance in the rain. It's not a decision based on feelings. It's a decision based on um, thinking, on what you've decided. Mm -hmm. And then your feelings follow suit. CBT and cognitive behavioral therapy also points, uh, teaches that, and rational emotive behavior therapy the same. So you've got to choose to be happy and satisfied with today. So what I, as a married person, do is I choose to be happy and serve the Lord, even though I have a lot of sacrifices in marriage as well that the single person does not sacrifice i have to trust god with finances whereas if i was single i would have had a lot of finances uh, given my you know my income compared to what my expenses would have been but that is a blessing and i trust god so i've got a, a, another challenge um, God's will is that the Bible is completely absent of any admonitions to worry about missing God's will here meaning we are instructed to follow, but we're never asked to fret about it. Is it God's will for me to get married? Isn't it? Um, yes, we know the Lord wants, uh, he's given marriage there, but am I missing God's will? Am I missed the person? You know what? God will guide you. Just be sincere in your heart in following him. Um, God is quite able to move us from place to place, you know, and to do what he wants us. Another thought here, your singleness is this, therefore not just for yourself. It is actually for God to use you to love others. Um, and uh, your singleness is not necessarily something that has to be fixed, that there's something wrong with your life. The Lord 
uh, can bless you right there. He can use you right there. It's just devote yourself to it. Um, and you know what? Um, <clears throat> you need to, um, as a single person, just remember that your life has purpose. You need to take responsibility for your emotional health. Um, you, um, you need love. You need to be loved. You need to be loved by other people. If you don't have that love in your life, I understand. I know single people that really struggle to build relationships and friendships. And that's where you need to press in and say, Lord, please help me. Please bless me with your children around me. Please help me to build trusting relationships with them um, so that I can... Um, I can be loved because the church is supposed to be a place of love. I'm not talking about the church building that kind of church. I'm talking about the body of Christ, supposed to love each other. So you say, Lord, I want to be one of those children of yours that love other people. Please help me to love others around me. Please send your children to love me and help me. And so there, that's where you can find family. Um, <clears throat> and your um Make Jesus your greatest treasure, not a relationship with a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a marriage partner. Make Jesus that greatest treasure. I found that once I've let go of money because I was seeking money because I thought it would know, give me financial security because I've got to look after this family and I justified it. So now a single person might say, but I need this relationship because then I could solve this loneliness problem and it could just solve all of these other problems. And I, I have somebody to go with there and I have that and this and that. Maybe you need to say, Lord, I put that down on your feet and I, I want you more. I want you more. I'm not saying I don't want that, but I, I want to submit that to your wisdom and say, please help me to seek you more. Because then that will come into perspective as well as to how important that is. And the Lord will even bless you there. That does not mean that he would just give you a marital partner, but that means that he, at least you will have him first. So you are, regardless of your marital status, you are fiercely loved by the Lord. And your heavenly father loves you and knows what you need, even before you ask him. Matthew 6, 33. So it's Lord, thank you that you care about me. May the Lord bless your needs there. Um, your problems in your life and your singlehood, even if it's a problem for you, like it doesn't have to be a problem for, me, for you, but if it is, it does, it's a problem that the Lord can make. Uh, um, that the Lord can actually make a blessing and you don't have to feel shame for being a single person that does not mean that you are a failure <clears throat> there's a guy Albert HSU is his surname he's Sue he wrote a book singles at the crossroads and he's got this quote from this book he says dignity and personhood come not from marriage and progeny but from identity within the kingdom of God so dignity and personhood actually comes from the kingdom of God, your identity in Christ, not from marriage and having children and those things. So <clears throat> next time you feel down as a, as a single person, remember that, um, that you can thank the Lord for his constant goodness towards you um, because his goodness does not depend on you being married or not. His presence in your life doesn't depend on you being married. Um, his faithfulness doesn't depend on that. Um, hold tight to his promises that he's with you and that he can make your feet like the hind's feet to walk uh, on, on mountains that are difficult places, like in Habakkuk 3. And remember that the Lord is with you always, that you are never alone. In fact, you can never be alone if, you are, if the Holy Spirit lives in you. You've lost that privilege to be alone. And just understand that marriage is something that we don't actually deserve. It's a gift. Uh, I'm not saying that from a place of pride or something. I'm, it's, it's a gift. It's a grace as well. But falling in love, getting married, struggling, laughing, doing life together, raising kids, growing old with the love of your life. Um, it's not necessarily something that is just promised in the word of the Lord. But marriage is important. And you can ask those things. But the biggest thing that he's promised is a genuine spiritual relationship with the Lord that he wants to bless you with and he wants to bless you with closeness with his children so I want to say my prayer for you is that the Lord will bless you to help you experience that you as a single person have value 
you have a purpose in life and that <clears throat> as you seek to serve the Lord, may he fulfill your desires and may he bless you, but may he fulfill mostly your desire to love him and to be loved by him. And I want to just say you, um, you and may he also give you purpose in serving him. And as you take control of your life and you take ownership for your happiness and you make a difference out there, you will experience that sense of purpose. And I bless you and may the Lord's face shine richly upon you and may he be gracious to you. Um, yes, that's all for me for tonight. So God bless you. And until next time, um, goodbye.